just launched is this new rear cycling radar, the Brighton Guardia. It is cheaper than the Garmin Varia and it has more functions. I've had it on test, so let's see if it's any good. If you are watching this, you're probably thinking about buying a rear radar for your bike. There will be plenty of people who tell you you don't need one, you just look over your shoulder or buy yourself a mirror, it's much cheaper. What these people fail to realize is that the beep that comes out very loudly from your radar is what alerts you to look over your shoulder or look down at your mirror. Woo! I need one out front, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> Would have been great talking about looking at the rear radar and going smack bang into a bin load. I was very skeptical when I first used a radar, the Varia, in this video, but it quickly won me over. It proved less useful when the road was busy and your sensors are full on, as I discovered while riding in Bordeaux in March 2022. But on quieter roads and suburban streets, especially in a headwind when it's hard to hear the vehicles behind, any radar is very useful. You know when you're doing a group ride or a club ride and you've got someone who yells car back or tail or whatever the call happens to be, that's what this Varia is. It's your little electronic club mate who's got your back. And of course, the established name is Garmin, and it costs £170. The first Challenger was the Megane at £115, which I have not tested, and I shall explain why towards the end of this video. They don't seem to want an independent review. This is the newcomer, cheapest of the lot at £110 from Brighton, called the Guardia. Ideally, I would have tested this new Challenger against the Champ, the Garmin, but I swapped my Varia for the version that has the built-in camera. That said, the radar elements are exactly the same between the standard and the camera Varias, so the comparison is valid. And I think if you can afford £300, I would recommend getting the camera version because that rear camera is excellent. It is much better than trying to squeeze a separate radar and camera onto your seat post. It leaves space too for a second light, which I run static. Uh, plus, the Garmin has the most secure mount of the lot. But we are testing the new Brighton Guardia against the older Varia. The first thing to see is how well the Challenger works. It's claimed to be able to pick up vehicles behind you up to 40 meters before the Varia. So let's start there. So we've set up a little test. A long, clear straight that's greater than the radar's range. The Varia is connected to the head unit and the Brighton to its app. And we're going to see which one boops first as the vehicle approaches. Who will be first? Brighton, oh, and the Garmin. Pretty much the same time. I've just swapped them around so I now have the Varia on the phone and the uh, Brighton on the head unit. See if that makes a difference. I've done this test a few times. I, I came out the other day and did it and the results were much the same. The, the two radars trigger at pretty much identical times, the Brighton perhaps slightly faster. Both the Brighton and Garmin change their flash patterns as vehicles come closer, drawing drivers' attention. Having driven up to someone using one of these, I found it really did work. Unlike the Garmin, the Brighton gets brighter, and in this case, solid, as you brake. A gyroscope sensor detects this. I'm not sure of the value of this feature, but other cyclists do seem to like it. Operation is really, really simple. With one button, it turns on, and you can switch between six light modes, solid high, solid low, group ride, night flash, 
and day flash and light off. You have to remember the order, but you can also switch between them in the app, so that's useful. Battery life, these are Brighton's claims and they range from 24 hours with no light to eight hours. However, they're massively affected by how much braking you do and how often the radar triggers, so I'd be cautious about the numbers. But unlike the Garmin, there is a warning light for when the battery level starts to drop, and that's also shown in the app. It paired incredibly easily with my phone and the Garmin 1030 head unit. It supports Ant Plus and Bluetooth, and if your head unit has a light sensor, it'll adjust its brightness automatically to the daylight. Anything else? Um, waterproof to IXP7, and if there's no motion for 10 minutes, it saves battery and drops into sleep mode. Fitting is simple, it'll go on a standard round seat tube and there are shims to allow it to fit aero and D-shaped posts too. If you lose one, you can get replacements. Regardless of the radar, some people have found that the volume through the head unit is a little bit low. My solution to that is to also have the phone app connected and have its volume turned right up and keep it somewhere near the front of your body. That way, even in windy conditions, you can hear when the radar goes off. And as you'd expect, the Brighton Guardia connects to all major head units. Garmin, Wahoo, Hammerhead, and of course, Brighton's own. Its launch has been delayed, so I've had a few extra weeks to ride around with it. And in that time, despite two firmware updates, I've noticed that I get a few false positives. It beeps as if there's a car behind you, and there's nothing there. Now, it doesn't detract from my overall point, but it's something to be aware of. Okay, so why didn't I review the Magen radar? They contacted me in May 2022, very keen, but before sending me any product, wanted me to sign a contract in which I would agree to popularize the promotional products in a positive manner and the promotional content shall not contain any content that is detrimental to Party A's brand image. That meant I couldn't give an impartial review. So you might want to ask why, and remember that if you see any such reviews on YouTube. I'm always happy to return items after testing. I've never been asked to sign something like that after decades of reviewing kit, so I declined and I've received no unit. In the case of Brighton, I told them at the outset I would only do an independent review, and they were confident enough in their product to send one, and I would say, quite rightly so. So after all of that, let's have some conclusions. My preference is for the camera combined with the radar. I think the extra 200 pounds is worth it. But you might not want a rear camera, or you might already have one, in which case I think the Brighton is a no-brainer. It's a very good rear radar. But for a full picture, why not check out my review of the plain Varia, as it were, and my review of the Varia with a camera. Give yourself an overall view and also take in other opinions because no one person's right. If this has been useful, give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. See you again next time. Goodbye.